<sighs> Greetings and welcome to day number 10 of Horrorfest. I'm here with two of my grindhouse kitties. Jasmine on my shoulder and Stratus is over here. Anyway, uh, some continuing coverage of Grindhouse. Let's see, where to begin? Uh, three new movies I saw. First, I'm gonna actually save the first one for the last part of this review because it's that, it's that good. So, the second movie I saw, technically, was Devil Times Five. Decent movie. Uh, for those of you that didn't know, Leif Garrett does a horror film. Come on. Come on. Over. Uh, uh. Alright. Ninja, come here. Now, now, now. Come on. All right, come on. Okay. Stay. Anyway, for those of you that don't know, Leaf Garrett is a horror film. Uh, he is one of these five children that basically escape from a mental asylum via a bus that flips over. They kill the bus driver. Surprisingly, the accident didn't kill him or them. They kill the bus driver in the middle of a snowy ski resort or some sort of some sort of um, giant cultel looking chain where Papa Doc holds his office of sorts. The guy who plays Papa Doc, the, the Papa Doc character looks more like a Mafia Don than anything, but anyway, I don't know. I don't really say much about what he does. His daughter and uh, her husband, they're in it too. And of course the son-in-law does not get along with Papa Doc. Uh, meanwhile, there are other people in this movie that work for Papa Doc, and they all get whacked pretty viciously by the children, a.k.a. the Devil Times Five. And these kids are pretty evil. Ah, Jasmine! Get down. Get down. Come on. Come on. Be careful the hood. Thank you. So yeah, pretty much these kids, they viciously whack the adults. Think Children of the Corn, but with a ski resort. Oh, and as an added bonus, the guy who played Boss Hog in the Dukes of Hazard, he's in it too. It's amazing. I hadn't seen him in anything but the Dukes of Hazard in this film. The next film, for those of you that are keeping up, is a movie I actually saw today. Technically, this would be day. I guess you could call this day 11. Tales of Terror. The Vincent Price version, not the one I had reviewed before. This one uh, was directed by Roger Corman. And he's pretty infamous for, you know, making movies quickly and semi cheaply. Good cast, though. This one has uh, Basil Rathbone, uh, Vincent Price, of course, Peter Lorre, and it's three stories all based on Edgar Allan Poe. There's the case of, uh, of uh, Valdemar, there's Morella, and there's the Black Cat. Black Cat's one of my favorite Poe stories. Um, there is a little difference to the Black Cat one, though, because 
in the uh, black cat there was no wine tasting character or anything to do with wine all that much except for the fact that the writer the storyteller would get drunk and he'd be a prick basically <sighs> And let's see, the other stories, of course, are Morella, the story of a wife that comes back from the dead. Stratus, relax. And um, then there's the case of a husband coming back from the dead in the case of M. Valdemar. And Valdemar was, um, Basil Rathbone was the villain in that one. And then Vincent Price, of course, Rises from the dead and fucks some shit up to save his widow, I guess you could say. And finally, we come to the movie I saw yesterday, which technically would be day 10. Night Train to Terra. This movie is spliced from three movies, three other horror films. This is the It's So Bad It's Good department, I guess you could say. Because it is pretty bad. And, uh, let's see. It's, uh, like I said, three horror films. It's basically a train ride between God and the Devil. And a rock band, which really sucks. Okay, this was way before the 90s. Where you had, like, bands like Rob Zombie. And Korn. And, you know, Megadeth. Or, you know, some, some... Some band that is, you know, decent. Uh, this is not one of them. Uh, it's a bunch of people with guitars, 80s sweatpants, and they're break dancing. Yeah, it's pretty bad. And of course, the train crashes, but just before the train's about to crash at dawn, there is these three stories. The first story John Philip Law plays a guy who basically is manipulated by a doctor to go out and kill people so that they so that uh, they can he can bring them back to this mental ward they kill the people and then they sell their parts for you know body parts decent story uh, Richard Mall gets a part in that the guy who played Bull in Night Court and then of course there was the next story was about um, this one woman who falls in love with another guy and then her and the guy are basically enrolled in this death club this death club uh, I guess it's people who are like it's like near-death experience types right well this one part they decide they're gonna play this you know, like Russian roulette type of game they play like a few Russian roulette types of games in these in this whole story first one involves a claymation fly. You should see the special effect on this. It is priceless. It is that bad. It's a giant fly. It looks like a cross between a tool video and someone having an LSD freakout. Not that I'm speaking from personal experience. I'm just guessing that. And, of course, uh, another, another game they play is like an electric chair type of one. That's a really good special effect one. If you get the chance to see that one, it's pretty good. Uh, and it's just, um, oh yeah, the third one's the Wrecking Ball one. Insert your own Miley Cyrus joke here, if you prefer. But, anyway. And finally, the third story of this film. Yes, we're still on Night Train to Terror. I've actually got this other movie. I've actually got the movie itself that they sort of edit. The third one, based on a movie called The Nightmare Never Ends with Richard Mall and some guy that looks like Leonardo DiCaprio's evil twin. And it's this guy is a Nazi hunter. He's hunting down this one Nazi that has survived for over 60 years and still looks like to be in his 20s. Meanwhile, Richard Mall is, plays this, um, he plays this, um, Nobel Prize winner who is an atheist wrote a book kind of trying to like be the next Nietzsche yeah so 
naturally the wife is going to be the pawn in this one and she's going to be involved and there's a monk and a few good special effects uh, once again there is a claymation scene with a giant demon yeah you gotta watch it it's really it's quite good anyway <sighs> tonight uh i don't know if i'll be watching another film tonight but that's pretty much it for this edition of the grind house horror fest still continues until then fare thee well wait okay go there you go no don't drop the pen